Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on this wonderful uh, occasion for uh, the nominees. This confirmation hearing by the Committee on Public Safety, Border Safety, Military and Veterans Affairs, Marriage Council, Infrastructure and Transit is hereby called to order. For the record, and in accordance with Section 8107 of Chapter 85, GCA, the first confirmation hearing notice was sent out Wednesday, April 10th, 2019, adhering to the five working days, sent out Friday, April the 12th, 2019. And in addition to this conf uh, confirmation hearing was noticed on onto the Guam Legislature website. The time now is 3.37. 337. Just a couple of administrative announcements here. You know, we have a we do have a lot of people that are probably going to testify today. So, if we can limit our testimony testimony for at least five minutes, or even a little bit longer, if you have some important things that you want to say about the candidate, uh, I just ask for your condolence. Uh, to just kind of limit your testimony because you know there's several confirmation confirmation hearing and public uh, announcement that we have to do today thank you very much for those who have signed up uh, to give oral testimony please make sure that your microphone is on and it, you uh, speak close to the mic and uh, uh, and also please state your name because this is going to go on record thank you very much on the agenda this, uh, this afternoon is the executive, executive appointment for St Steve Ignacio to serve as the Chief of Police for the Guam Police Department. At this time, I'd like to call Steve to come forward. We're going to allow Steve to go ahead and do his remarks and testimony. And then I will call on the... Uh, uh, those that are giving testimony. But before I do that, let me just recognize some of my colleagues here uh, that are present today for this uh, confirmation hearing. I want to recognize Mary Torres on my right, Luis Munya, Senator Luis Munya, Jim, Senator Jim Moylan, Senator Clint Rigel, Senator Therese Tarlai, Senator Shelton. And on my left, Senator Sabrina Perez, Senator Tello Taitagui, Senator Joe San Augustine, and my favorite, Senator Bisculi. <laughs> and of course, uh, last but not least, <laughs> my favorite speaker, Senator Tina Munya Barnes. Also, before uh, we, uh, we start, uh, I want to recognize uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, dignitaries here that have been long-time public servants. I want to servants. Uh, I want to recognize former Governor Kauti Sigitaris. I want to also recognize who's this? Former Senator and former Police Chief and former Director of the Department of Correction, my good friend, <laughs> Senator Frank, Frank, uh, Frank Iz Izazaki. <laughs> also, Senator John Kinata is here, also my favorite from the southern area. And I want to recognize my favorite mayor of Marizu, the only favorite mayor of Marizu that I have, <laughs> uh, Mayor, mayor Chargalev. <laughs> and also my other favorite mayor, Mayor June Bloss from Barragada. <laughs> and also Mayor uh, Jess uh, Bautista. Vice mayor. 
of Vice Mayor of Barigada, Mayor Robert Lizama is here. Yes. Former Mayor Robert Lizama, my favorite. <laughs> and my also uh, my Mayor of Zonia. I'm not going to say Zonia rules because, you know, but Mayor Jesse Blas is here. Thank you, Legends. Oh, my good friend. Uh, Former Chief of Police and my good friend Paul Suba. Okay, so uh, I'm Senator Kelly Mar Titano is here. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you very much. So we can now commence with uh, the good words from uh, the uh, to be the Chief of Police. Steve, my good friend, uh, Steve Ignacio, go ahead, Perry. <laughs> you know, sometimes my wife says, stop doing that, you're making people laugh. So, you know. Have a day. good afternoon. Senator Jose Piro Chalai, Chairman of the Committee on Public Safety, Border Safety, Military and Veteran Affairs, Mayor's Council, Infrastructure, and Public Transit. Good afternoon as well to the following senators, starting from my left, Senator Mary Torres, Senator Amanda Shelton, Senator Luis Munoz, Senator Jim Whelan, Senator Clint Mergell, Senator Thruister Lai, Speaker Tina Munoz Barnes, Senator Regine Bisco Lee, Senator Jose San Augustine, Senator Tello Taiti, Senator Sabina Perez, and Senator Kelly Marstaitalo. Thank you and good afternoon. I am Stefan C. Ignacio, the nominee of the Honorable Governor, Lourdes Leon Guerrero, and the Honorable Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenaru for Chief of Police, Guam Police Department. I would like to thank the Governor and Lieutenant Governor for their faith and confidence in my nomination as Chief of Police. I am truly humbled for this once in a lifetime experience. I was born on May 15, 1968, and I am 50 years old. I am married to Betty Jean Luan Lorenzo, my beautiful wife, and together we have three children. Our oldest, this, our oldest daughter is Frances Jean, who works for the Naval Undersea Warfare Center and is married to Kobe Barnes. My son-in-law is currently deployed with the Guam Air National Guard in the Middle East. Together they have one son, Gabriel, my only grandchild. My second daughter, Stephanie, she is a social work major at the University of Guam. In her sophomore year, Stephanie also works for the Guam Legislature and is the secretary for the 32nd Guam Youth Congress. Our youngest son is Stephen Matthew, who is a seventh grader at San Vicente Catholic School, and he's a semi-pro at Fortnite. He asked me to put something in because I didn't have anything for him. <laughs> That's for you, son. My wife is the daughter of Joseph Tenetongo Lorenzo and Francis Lawan Lorenzo. Uh, my mother-in-law is here today to, uh, joining me. Thank you very much. I am the son of Daniel Sosuiko Ignacio and Maria King Cruz Ignacio. And at this time, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of my biological father, Seraphine Cruz. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> More importantly, though, I am the grandson of the Senti Regis Cruz and Francisca King of Cruz. I was raised by my maternal grandparents in the beautiful village of Maritzo. To support his family, my grandfather operated a small retail store and at one time he ventured off and opened a lunch wagon. They call them food trucks nowadays. Right next to the Santa Marin Kamalin Park in Maritzo. In his spare time, my grandfather dedicated himself to the San Dimas Catholic Church as the deacon. My grandmother worked for the Department of Education assigned to the Maritza Elementary School. She started off as a cook, I'm sorry, as a custodian, and eventually moved on and retired as a cook. As a child growing up, I was either helping my grandpa at the church or lunch wagons on the weekends. During the school days, I was helping my grandma clean classrooms or the cafeteria. I am very proud of this fact that I was raised by my grandparents. 
who instilled in, in me values such as hard work, dedication, honesty, and faith in God. I attended Maritza Elementary School and then moved on to Inneron Junior High School. I then attended and finished middle school at St. Francis in Jordania. Jordania rule, sir. <laughs> Same to you, Senator, today. I spent my freshman year at Father Duenas High School and then eventually returned back to public school and graduated in 1986 from Inneron High School. Ooh. After completing high school, I chose to find a full-time job over going to college or joining the military. My first job was a busboy cleaning tables and washing dishes at the Sizzlers restaurant in Nagania. About 10 months into working for Sizzlers, I received a phone call from my high school classmate asking if I would be interested in joining the Guam Police Department. Um, after going through the, uh, after going through the uh, screening process, screening and selection process, I was hired on August 31st, 1987. And my journey and career as a police officer began. <clears throat> Excuse me. My fellow recruits and I were part of the 28th Guam Police Training Cycle, which commenced on January 1988 and we graduated in July of the same year. From 1987 to present, I have been employed with the Guam Police Department. Over the past 31 years, I've worked my way up from a recruit, police officer one, a police officer two, a police officer three, a sergeant one, a lieutenant, and police captain prior to my nomination as the chief of police. During these 31 years, I have been a criminal investigator, a detective supervisor, and the officer in charge of criminal investigation section. I also supervised a multi-agency unsolved homicide task force. I spent nearly 14 years of my career as the officer in charge of Highway Patrol Division, where I upgraded the breath testing instruments, brought, bought the drunk bus, uh, buster van, and developed the book and confined policy, which led to the reduction of drunk driving arrests. As a captain, I was assigned to Administration Division, Support Division, and finally as the commander of Forgotten Your Precinct, prior to my appointment. As my career progressed, I realized that, that achieving a higher education was important in order to ascend through the ranks. So I returned back to college. I first enrolled at Guam Community College where I completed my associate's degree in law enforcement administration. After a short break, I then continued on at the University of Guam where I earned a bachelor's degree and later a master's degree in public administration. I completed my education while working full time as well. In addition to college, the Guam Police Department afforded me opportunities for all five for off-island training as well. One of the most significant was the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Special Agent Course, which was four, month, four months long and held in Fort McClellan, Alabama. This course helped to hone my investigative skills. I would like to thank former Chief of Police Adolf Scambellary for affording me the opportunity to attend this course. I was one of only 12 local officers selected to attend. Aside from being a police officer, I have been an adjunct instructor at the Guam Community College from 1998 to present. I have over 1,500 hours of classroom instruction, teaching different criminal justice course related courses. Many of my students are either college students or recruits from the Department of Corrections, Customs and Quarantine, Guam Police Department, and the Superior Court of Guam Marshals and Probation Officers. I am also a proud member of the Barragata Municipal Planning Council. Since assuming the job as the Chief of Police, I have met with the staff, both uniform and civilian. One thing abundantly clear from these meetings is that the Guam Police Department lacks adequate personnel. There are currently only five police officer trainees who recently graduated. To address the shortages, some of the ongoing recruitments include 30 police officer trainees, a personnel officer, fingerprint examiner, a criminalist one, law enforcement dispatchers, property control officer, and detention facility guards. In addition to recruitment, we are also working on the $1 million procurement for patrol cars and the multi-million dollar upgrade to our outdated land mobile radio system. 
We are also in the process of completing the final phase of our records management and report writing system with the procurement of docking stations for laptops and patrol cars with wireless connectivity. This will allow officers to write reports in the field and access police records information as needed. We have received two prisoner transport vans, which will be used by detention officers to pick up arrestees at the precincts. This will alleviate the downtime of officers from having to perform these duties. In May of this year, the much anticipated Central Precinct will be completed and will replace the 50 plus year old Hagatnya Precinct. Within the next several months, we anticipate construction to begin on the new evidence control section in GEO. The Guam Police Department continues to support and grow our neighborhood watch programs, along with the village mayors. Our community affairs unit works with various community groups and schools in organizing events aimed at promoting positive behavior among our youth. As the chief of police, it is my commitment, along with the longer administration, to, more, to put more officers on patrol to increase visibility and make our officers more easily accessible to the community. In closing, I would like to thank the many family and friends who have joined me here today in support of my confirmation hearing. To the hardworking officers of the Guam Police Department, I thank you for your service and continued commitment to our community. Lastly, to the senators before me, I thank you, each and every one of you, for your time. And I look forward to your support of my confirmation as the next Chief of Police. I am now subject to any questions from the committee. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'm going to call those that want to uh, uh, testify on behalf of our nominee, our principal. Just uh, please come up because I, I, I don't think I'm going to go through, through uh, whoever signed here first. We're going to go from left to right and then we'll go down. I'll go, I'll go last we'll go, right? Is there anybody else? Uh, is this, is this the, this is it? First, first panel is still a witness? Okay, let me start with my favorite mayor of Marisa. Go ahead, Perry. My left, my right. Perry, thank you, Senator. My name is Ernest Chagla, as you know that. Everybody that doesn't know me is still Ernest Chagla. I'm the mayor of Malesu, and uh, I'm here in support of the confirmation of my nephew, Stephen Ignacio, whom I told that I, when I grow up, I want to be like him. So, you know, I grew up, Senator, to all you on the panel, I grew up with Captain Ignacio. I don't want to say that I'm a lot He's a lot younger than I am. That will make me a lot older. So, but he grew up several years behind me, and I, like he said, he he was raised by and reared by the uh, his grandparents, who are known as the Familian Camel. They're the only family of camels that don't hump, have humps. So, you know, I, I always tease my cousin that. So, anyways, you know, being raised as you guys may know, being raised by your nan and tata and your grandparents, you know. They may spoil you, uh, you with everything that you want and need, but they also hold you to a higher standard of conduct and a higher degree of restraint, which is what the officers here in blue are held to as well. So I think his upbringing was conducive to him being a good officer and more so now as being the chief. Because you can, you, know, you got to lead by example. So if uh, there are a few that may detract from him being an example, I don't know, but I, I sure want to be like him. So, anyways, um, Mr. Ignacio, Captain Ignacio, soon to be chief if confirmed, you know, has always been a good boy. 
You know, even when you were a boy, you were a cold boy by your aunts and your elders. When you grew up to be a man, you're still a boy. So, you know, to him, he's still a boy to me because I'm still older. But I, I truly support Captain Ignacio because, like I said, I grew up with him. He's never been problematic, always been friendly. And like I said, he's held to a higher standard because his grandpa, if, if there was a title of deacon in those days, he would be the first deacon on island, or but most especially in Maleso because his father spent most of his time at the... Uh, at the church helping the, the priest inside and outside of the church. He had one of the best and well-known hamburgers that you have to eat the, 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 the patties before you get to the bun because it protrudes out like two, one to two inches around. So by the time you eat your main course, you're already, the appetizer already make you full. But it's the upbringing that I'm here that, uh, you know, to, to serve with you guys that he was brought up by his nun and tata. And like I said, they may spoil you, you with all your wants and your needs, but he was held to a higher standard of conduct and higher degree of restraint, which is all these officers are held to as well. So being, uh, following that same standards and conduct, uh, it wasn't hard for him because he was practicing it since he was young. So I believe that he, he can carry that and lead by example. And uh, if I didn't come here to testify in his behalf, the people in Malaysia would have chased me out and every day I will get a, if it gets confirmed, every day I'll get a ticket anyway. So thank you very much, Senator. This is Ms. Marcella, my favorite. <laughs> Buenas and half a day. Thank you, Senators, for taking this time to hear our testimony. My name is Francis Jean, or Nani, as most people know me, and Stefan Ignacio is my daddy. I was born in 1987 the same year my dad decided that he wanted to do more and made the conscious decision to join the Guam Police Department to serve and protect Itanota Zanitautauta. My dad and I grew together. While my dad was raising me, the Guam Police Department was growing him into the man that sits before you. My dad taught me perseverance and patience. He started his career as a police recruit with a high school diploma while being a full-time father, police officer, and part-time cook, my dad made time to pursue a higher education and went on to receive his associate's, bachelor's, and master's degree in criminal justice and public administration at the Guam Community College and the University of Guam. His hard work, dedication, and determination ultimately led him to be a captain and now the acting chief of police, which with me and my siblings was no easy feat. He somehow managed to do all this while still making time to attend every school program, every dance performance, every after school game, and extracurricular event we threw at him. My dad taught me service before self and how to lead by example. He never asks another officer to do something he would not do himself. Throughout his career, he has put in the long and draining hours, sharing the load with other officers as they work whether it was crime scene investigations that kept them from returning home for days, directing traffic in the grueling heat for hours at a time, reaching out to victims of assault to listen to their experiences and help them find a way forward to healing, or being an advocate for those who confided in him and felt their voices were not being heard. My dad has taught me what it means to be a good leader and to treat everyone with respect. I've learned that being a good leader is not a position. It is an attitude. I cannot begin to tell you how many times I've heard from people from all walks of life telling me the impact my dad has had on them in one way or another. I've heard about when the government was faced with adjusting personnel to backfill different departments, my dad used his own time and money to buy drinks, food, and snacks for police officers who were not able to leave their posts and distributed them almost daily to ensure that all of the officers were taken care of. I've been told that although my dad holds the title of captain, that he treats all the officers the same, that he doesn't treat them like numbers on a manning document, but like the individual people they are. He takes their professional and personal lives seriously and helps to keep them balanced. I remember a Korean woman once told me that many years ago her shop was robbed 
and my dad helped her through the process and helped make her feel safe again. My dad taught me integrity and the value of good morals and ethics. He raised me to know that there will be times in your life that you will have to make difficult decisions. But regardless of the situation, if you do what is right, then it's not really a difficult decision, is it? I've learned that this principle is not always as simple as it seems. But dad also taught me that if you don't have the answers, you should look for someone who can help you find them. By surrounding yourself with like-minded people and people of the same moral turpitude, you will always have an acceptable avenue to reach a common goal. I know that the position that my dad has been called upon to serve in is not an easy assignment. There may be times that his decisions may not be the most popular and that the perception others may have of him may be vastly different from mine. But I ask that you have the same faith in him today and tomorrow that his family has for him, the people of Guam had for him since 1987, and that the governor and lieutenant governor have in him that he will continue to be guided by these same values he lives by to strive to make Guam safer and a better place for us all. When you deliberate amongst yourselves about whether or not my dad best exemplifies the individual who should hold the title of chief of the Guam Police Department, I would like, you, I would like to leave you with the words of Theodore Roosevelt to ponder upon. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or who the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who faces, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again, because there is not effort without error or shortcomings, but who does actually strive to do the deed, who knows the great enthusiasm, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails, he fails while daring greatly. Sito Smaasi, and again, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Buenas tardes. Gay hello, speaker. Tina Barnes. Gay hello, e committee. Senator Jose Piro Chalahi. Jan Hamzu. Niman Ona Robli. Nasid Benti Nitauta. I don't think any other testimony will count today after you heard the testimony of the daughter of Chief Ignacio. It tells you the character of the man he is to have his own child come up and speak for him. I am Angel Regis Sablon. At the outset, let me wish all of you during this Simon and Pashon on Sincero Nefilis Pascua. I am here this afternoon to testify in full support of the appointment of Guam Police Department Captain Steve Ignacio to serve as our Chief of Police. I am not here only in my capacity as the Executive Director of the Mayor's Council of Guam, but as a personal friend of Captain Steve. Captain Steve is no stranger to any of us, especially our residents in all the villages. He has served with dedication as a member of Guam's finest since ever since, and has risen to the ranks due to his dedication, skills, and abilities in working with our residents and making decisions to improve and protect our lives and our livelihood. He has experienced many events, both happy and tragic. He has heard the cries of our youth and felt the pains of our elderly. He has faced criminals with one eye and death with the other eye. Simply put, he has seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. He knows that hard work is never easy. He also knows that hard work will lead to even harder work. That harder work is being chief of police. The position of chief of police carries many responsibilities and wears many hats, just as all the men and women of our law enforcement agencies. Mentor, social worker, peacemaker, counselor, investigator, and the list goes on. 
almost sounds like what mayors do. But the one hat that I personally know that Captain Steve Ignacio will wear well and fit well is problem solver. I have witnessed the performance and work of Captain Steve back many full moons ago when I was at the Department of Corrections. I spent 12 years at DOC, and fortunately I could come and go at any time. Unfortunately, as prison environment being what it is, there were times and incidents that required the professional assistance and guidance of the Guam Police Department. I had an effective and tireless problem solver assigned to assist me in getting to the root causes of what and why events were happening at DOC that were not supposed to be happening. That problem solver was then Sergeant Steve Ignacio. In him, I saw a man that was straightforward, honest, and responsive. Ever since then, we became more than just two guys that can call each other up and exchange our playbooks, but we became personal friends who to this day has my utmost respect and trust. Today, as Captain Steve Ignacio, he still has the energy, determination, and responsiveness as the mayors and vice mayors of Guam, all 26 of them, can attest to. They have had the occasion to work with him at different commands. I have no doubt that he will bring with him to the position of chief of police an even greater enthusiasm and desire to be a problem solver, to make things happen and make things better for our men and women in blue and our people of all colors. Captain Steve Ignacio knows the people of Guam and the people of Guam know him. This problem solver has the desire, he has the will, he has the compassion, he has the capability. All he needs is your support. I humbly ask you to support the appointment of Captain Steve Ignacio as our island's next chief of police. It is up to you to remove the acting in his title, which he began on January 7, 2019. With your support and confirmation, Acting Chief of Police can continue his work as Chief of Police, Steve C. Ignacio. Sign Maasi, and a blessed and happy Easter to all of us. This is Masi Angel, uh, Bob, sir. Thank you very much for coming. This is Masi. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Sanchez Lozama, Honorable Senator and Chairman Jose Tolahi, and Senators of the Committee of Public Safety, Border Safety, Military and Veteran Affairs, Mayor's Council, Infrastructure, and Public Transit. As a former Sergeant with the Guam Police Department and a former mayor of Jigo, I am here today in favorable support of the nomination of Captain Stephen Cruz Ignacio as Chief of Police for the Guam Police Department. Back in 1988 was when I first met this gentleman, Captain Ignacio. While I was employed with the Guam Police Department, I was assigned to the Guam Community College Criminal Justice Academy as an instructor and cadre. It was at that time that I first met recruit Stephen C. Ignacio undergoing police training with the 28 police cycle. As all police recruits can attest, the police academy training was physically rigorous and academically challenging, stressful, and mentally draining. Recruit Stephen Ignacio during the training was once appointed to a leadership role assigned as class commander, taking charge of the entire 28 police cycle and ensuring that all recruits follow his lead by following all department and training rules and regulations. As class commander, he performed exceptional. On June 1988, Recruit Stephen Ignacio completed the Recruit Academy and Physical Performance Tests 
and received his certificate of completion and graduated in the 28th Police Academy cycle as Police Officer 1. Then assigned to the Guam Police Department Patrol Division. Over the course of Captain Ignacio's 31 years of professional service, he had prepared himself to pursue up the ranks in the Guam Police Department, competing with his fellow officers, and marked by promotions to the rank of Police Officer 2, to Police Officer 3, to Sergeant 1, to Lieutenant, and now to his present rank as Captain. Captain Ignacio in all ranks that he served worked closely with civilian personnel in various divisions in the department and continued to encourage for excellence in performing their duties. Captain Inosho has served in different capacities, providing the, the multitude of services to the public that are expected of the Guam Police Department. Captain Inosho was a police officer, a detective, a supervisor, a manager, and now as chief of police appointed the Guam Police Department, Captain Inosho's experience with classroom knowledge, countless hours of police training, and numerous recognition and awards gives him the confidence to accept more responsibilities to lead the department as chief of police. Captain Inosho's desire to seek challenge is what is being manifested in this hearing today. I am here because I believe that Captain Inosho is a man of compassion and understanding and possesses the quality of leadership essential to the mission of the Guam Police Department, its uniform and civilian personnel and the public, and would, I would like to take on the challenge to lead the Guam Police Department. Should you confirm him, his appointment by the governor our Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I humbly ask each and every one of you members for your support to confirm the, confirm the appointment of Captain Stephen C. Inosio as Chief of Police. Thank you, Sidus Masi. Sidus Masi, Bob. Major, sir. Okay, um, there's three of us. I don't know which one of the majors are your favorites, but I'll take it since I'm testifying I'm your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Half a day, Honorable Chairman, Senator Terlahi, and members of the 35th Guam Legislature. I sit here before you to testify on behalf and in support of Captain Stephen C. Ignacio, who's aspiring to become the next Chief of the Guam Police Department. For the record, my name is GPD Major Fred M. Chargleff. I currently oversee the Investigations Bureau and collaterally assigned to the Mariana Regional Fusion Center as its Deputy Director. Chief of Police, you know, what, what comes to mind? Honesty, integrity, reliability, to name a few. This position demands a greater expectation than your typical leader. It requires an extraordinary individual who will be faced with a multitude of challenges and constant criticism, internal and external to the organization such as ours. He or she must balance their duties as the head of Guam's premier law enforcement agency and to navigate the issues such as shortages in manpower, morale, and community-centric policing that have constantly plagued GPD. He will maximize the command staff's knowledge and wisdom to ensure they execute their duties to keep the community we are serving safe. Since 1987, I have watched Captain Ignacio ascend the ranks and observed him to possess the traits that I have just mentioned above. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Ignacio is that extraordinary individual. So now I want to talk about some of the issues that we're, we're facing in the department. Manpower. To provide some historical perspective, in May 2015, GPD had approximately 330 uniform personnel. As of this date today, we currently have 279 police officers. 
That's a staggering 50 personnel decrease. And we wonder why we're always having to respond late, people not you know, getting the services that, that is expected of a police organization. Now that's equivalent to nearly the personal strength of two precincts out of four precincts. That's equivalent to almost two of the precincts. The neighborhood patrol division, I will henceforth uh, uh, put it as NPD, which consists of the four precincts is the quote unquote backbone of our department and any police organization. These are our frontline officers. Due to the massive decline in manpower the past three years, Captain Ignacio has assured GP personnel that NPD will be the focus of the department's recruitment efforts. He actually took away a couple of my officers at investigations bureau just for the record. <laughs> so he's already, and we put him out on patrol. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> So, um, since assuming the acting chief's position in January, Captain Ignacio was authorized to fill a, third, a, a total of 30 officers, as he mentioned earlier. And yes, I've seen, it, I've seen the GG once, and we, you know, we are currently uh, conducting polygraphs, which is one of the most uh, intense backgrounds that we have to perform uh, to facilitate the recruitment process. Now I'd like to go on to morale. Since assuming the office of chief of police, Captain Ignacio, or Acting Chief Ignacio has, a, has had numerous senior command staff meetings. Okay. The attendees are all the lieutenants, captains, and majors of the department. In previous command staff meetings, the sessions were very tense, and in many instances, it was a one-way communication with information flowing strictly from the top down. Respect was non-existent. Captain Ignacio's approach is that of a unified, very professional, interactive, and a calm demeanor. Current command staff meetings are integrated with respect and outcomes are collaborative amongst the staff. As a senior leader for more than 20 years, I've learned that when respect is not initiated at the top, disrespect will flow downward and affect the lower rank and file. Staff meetings are now pleasant and interaction amongst the staff is respectful and invigorating. I think we, do, we, we spend more time joking than we do sometimes get some of the work done. And then most of the work, we have to do it offline. But, you know, it's, it's, that's what gets work done, you know, when people are, are able to interact. So, um, Captain Ignacio respects the command staff's rank. We all wear ranks, including, you know, Chief Ignacio or, or current Captain Ignacio. But more importantly, he respects the, vid, the individual for who he sh or she is and what he or she brings to the command staff meetings. And, and for, for those of us, you all mostly are, are, are in leadership positions, that's vitally important. It's one thing to, you know, to, to, to respect the rank, but if you respect the person, then the rank just follows behind it. So that, that's something that he has done. This is something that has been non-existent for a few years. With Captain Ignacio's vitality and enthusiasm, morale and respect is something that he has embodied and will continue if confirmed as the chief of police. Now I want to get into community-centric policing. When, law, when the law enforcement community discusses the buzz phrase, quote unquote, community-centric policing, as some of you probably have heard of this, it refers to executing law enforcement strategies that involve the community. And that's the important thing is the involvement of the community. One previous community-centric strategy was the closing of Agatnya Precinct where his daughter was talking about providing, you know, um, logistical, you know, support. That's when he was the precinct commander and they shut down Agatnya Precinct, okay? This, in my professional opinion, and this is, not, this is strictly my professional opinion, was poorly executed and was counterproductive in involving the community. You, if you want to involve the community, then you need to get your precincts involved with that community, thus putting the safety and well-being of the citizenry in jeopardy that that closed precinct station serves. In my conversation with Captain Ignacio, he assured the staff and I that that would not occur during his watch. That's something that's very important. In closing, I would like to thank you all for allowing me to provide the testimony supporting Captain Ignacio to become the next chief of the Guam Police Department. It is my hope that your that you confirm Captain Ignacio to become the chief so that he can continue the great work that he has accomplished in the last three months. Sincerely, Major Fred Charter, Guam Police Department.
Thank you. Is this my seat, Major? Is it my turn? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm nervous. Buenos than half a day, Senador and Senadora. Guau, si usep and Regis Castro Evangelista. The Gaigizo Guinea Pago, put by who to Stigo Fabrabli, para in a punta and Senor Stephen Ignacio, para a Guerrero in the Batamento and Policia and Guahan. Honesto, sincero, Zorsi, Carinosu, then the Boto Estina Tauto, Gitsotnia, Itanotnia, then a special menti, if familiar. Todestina Qualidad, a Gogoti, Sisino Ignacio, the Guinea and the Sina Tangoku, Naman Safu here, the Taza, Paro Dite Uditani, then Gimpudi Protection Ta, the Protection Itanota, then Kentori Protection Infamilata. Todi tempus is in your Ignacio, except an again in as do us, not to tell it all do in in a sinania than confessionia, but on a lamalic in a la todu comutauta guan. Tungu loqui, nagin in custom breta, a cuturata in manamoru, than in manam corta, nahatuli it in emtomnia, the minor lake near comuatungu, mamma tauta. Hasu, that then get to senior mamma tauta how. Pues ni hafa na toto gi lo tano sinya un togwi hatuka hadzi uma punta hao. Lo esti magahin a gof tumu tumogwi si senor Ignacio. Fuera ki experienciar nagi departamento en policia en Guahan, mai duka esti na tauta. Mas ki tinat kilo na escuela. Ha continu, a continua escuela na hasta ki magadua gi universidad Guahan gi administración publico na banda. Tibai Husiga Amdu Simangani, Ni Iminalik Signor Ignacio, Estantingo, Lobai Ufaisin Amdu Pufabot, Considera it at Luho, Para Estina Position, the Mars Hasu Lokwit, Na Ombisi Maga Haga, Ha Adziguit Mismu in Tritordu Tauto Nisina Ha Adzik, Sa Hatungo, Za Hongi, Na hana sinya kumoni i departamento ng pulisya ng Guahan para imos tat kilo na istaw si Jesus Masi. Eno, eno ilegmo u onra ni ilegmo sa dinanti i gubat nopta, tani si gundo gubat no inajek niya. Para ejer na tao to. Ja, ja ngayon nata ni si Hulu na ikulang guaw hindi masam ko. Sampi gagi ling ja pes na si John San Agustin lo. Sampi gagi ja hamzo sumasangan hafa bidad na ano na bihu ganon lo. Lo sti abe sangan na tori sti siya mangacongo para tori mantistigo na ani be. Di bawah fashion poma apa bay konfirmasinya si Stephen bay tago. I don't know what to say now. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Madam Speaker, Honorable Senators, distinguished guests, and of course the appointee and his family. I'm Paul Suba, of course you know me as a former Chief of Police of the Guam Police Department, the best and premier police department in the world. And I say that with all sincerity and honesty that this island has proven to me growing up uh, on Guam that we have people with more than just heart and intellect. We have a passion for the good things in life and for the safety and protection of those that are vulnerable, innocent, and need men like Stephen Ignacio to rise through the ranks as he has done, as you've heard, to take the leadership role so that we can, as you can see today, I'm impressed, I'm very impressed, honest. This amazing group today 
your presence, your time to dedicate to public safety is incredible. You have a former chief here, senator, and director of uh, DOC. He mentored many of us. I can attest to that. I also was Stevens cadre in the academy in 1987. He doesn't know this, but I tried my best to get him to quit. <laughs> and you know what? He broke me because I could see not only he had a passion to become a good and great law enforcement officer, but he also had an attitude that just kind of confused me because he was always cheerful, you know, which is amazing because police work is serious. We all know that. But as you heard the good major mention that in their staff meetings, there is that lightheartedness and sense of humor like you do too, Chairman, to, to kind of lift the spirits so that we don't put up walls and have fake masks on. And I think Stephen Ignacio has risen through the ranks, proving to each and every one of us, one of us amongst his peers that he has the capability because he did it and we watched him do it. And we also look forward to him uh, taking this leadership role, which we, I guess after today, all I really want to say is beyond the confirmation hearing, I do hope and pray that we're all going to truly support him. And as he requests and look for assistance from wherever it could be, that we will step up to the plate as he did, as he is doing today. And I've spoken to, real quickly, lastly, I've spoken to many people in the community about the decision, the uh, appointment. You know, I wasn't being biased or anything that I do uh, appreciate, and I'm 150% I'm for his appointment and, and confirmation. But many in the civilian and uh, private sector were all excited to hear that, uh, that this was happening. Many could not be here today, including retirees, by the numbers. They would have filled up out, outside of the session hall, but they are in support, and I, I can tell you that from my own personal experience in my heart. So again, Captain, we're proud of you. Jesus <laughs> Masipo. Lutyon sang ang nagsimula sa sumani sa policeman. Well, anyway, I served 18 years with the Guam Police Department, and Po Suba, who became chief of police, was under me before. Anyway, we're going to start with uh, uh, with the senators to uh, ask questions, whatever. His godfather wants to speak. Who Senator wants to speak? Any, anybody else wants uh, wants to? Uh, Okay, maybe maybe some of uh, Chris Chris whoever wants to uh, testify, just come on up. Uh, Chief, you can you can you can uh, sit down. Once again, I, I just want to ask for your indulgence. Uh, uh, please try to cut your testimony to at least five minutes because. Uh, <laughs> at least five minutes so we can just uh, get the other group. I'm pretty sure there's another group that are coming up to testify. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much once again. Uh, we want to start with former senator and former vice speaker, uh, Ted Nelson. Uh, go ahead, uh, my signer. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dispenser, no problem again. Cabrera. Mr. Chairman, Speaker, and Senators, thank you 
thank you for this opportunity to allow us to come on behalf of Steve. Mr. Chairman, my purpose today is to appeal to you for the full confirmation. Total 15 votes for my godson, Stephen Cruz Ignacio. Mr. Chairman and, and Senators and people of Guam, Stephen has been delegated with one of the top priorities of Magahaga. It's a top priority, Queen and Mr. Shaw. Kumikiling and I do. My son, Stephen, now you have a big job ahead of you. It's a very important time. You, nobody can question your background. You're starting from the bottom. Officer one, two, three, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, up to now. You have served practically everything in the department from procurement, personnel, even up to the point of Balea. You have also become an adjunct professor at GCC. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is that I want to emphasize to the rest of the truth. Now, Samu Mamapara Maniscuela. She's Steve at the Tunis de Barum, where he is right now. Mama Nogui, for about 20 years, in GCC. There's a most more comfortable, Manahi, simply respect, respect. Nikan, ni todo, the troop, the policia, with the department. Importante, na uspia, so complete, edi, malagona, magahaga. Salani, can not pick up the paper, the newspaper? Bula problema. Can it here? Go on my rob, go on my rig. Especially. Importante, na, with your leadership, that the Laika image qua from now on, with the new leadership. The GVP, I got cast over, for an aid. At 10 million for my promote Guam. At the same time, there is a problem with the Now, with the ability, with the background and capability and the support of the rest of the troop, Guam can be a lot better. Guam can be, we can call Guam a paradise. This is sorry that the spear is not a purely problem for my goal. The Sina, Steve, Ausa, Michelle, the police reserve, the Tauza budget. Ausa, the police reserve, so for the argument or compliment to the other man is Sita Gini, it's not. Mr. Chairman, when I can rest, when I go, and I'm going to say the Lord, don't clue, don't clue. I'm going to say this to you. When I go, look, I'm going to recognize it. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, for such appointment. It's about time. Now, Guaha, Chief of Police, Papa, get a no, my lesson, my God, thank you. I think it's about time. I'm pretty sure that the people of Malaysia 
con mi lecco y compañero de la familia. Me han dado poco. Yo soy bien mandado. Yo me han dado mucho. Pero me han dado poco. Por eso, por favor, que hay que poder. Please, no hay que supportar mi by voting 100% confirmation for Captain Steve Ignacio, the boy from the south. And again, don't clue now. Now, my point is, I do get in a position. She just wants it, the chair, but I'm speaking. Senado Tiro, Tim Simalago Munaboto, Bay Tagin in Asidao, Jabin Ioni Kinsey. This is what I said. Half a day. My name is Christopher Camacho Flores, Captain, retired United States Army Military Police Corps. Prior to my retirement, I was assigned as Provost Marshal, Red River Army Depot, Texarkana, Texas. In the civilian world, this is equivalent as Chief of Police. I also have two brothers, Henry, also known as Hank, and Larry Flores, who both served in the Guam Police Department. Larry worked alongside with Captain Stephen Ignacio when they were both assigned to the Criminal Investigation Section. During the second term of former Governor Felix Camacho, I was Special Staff Assistant to the Office of the Governor assigned to Government House. It was during my tenure at Government House that I interacted on a daily basis with the police officers assigned to the executive security detail, the SWAT teams, and the Department of Corrections officers who transported the halfway house inmates for work detail. The officers gave me a nickname and I was simply referred to as CAP. I forged friendships and bonded with many of these officers, especially the ones who also serve our great nation in the Army Reserve, Air and National Guard. We engage in after hour activities like running 5K events. One of these officers, Siegfried Dove Mortera, was my running buddy prior to receiving his higher calling to eternal rest. My brother Hank also introduced me to numerous police officers who were assigned to Agat, Dededo, and Tumon precincts while he was Station SIF supervisor. To this day, I have maintained my friendship with these officers. I am here today to implore this committee to confirm Captain Stephen Ignacio as the next Chief of Police to lead this department. Prior to this afternoon, I contacted many police officers in all ranks and retirees inquiring about Captain Ignacio and doing my due diligence to ensure my testimony would be truthful and accurately portrays Captain Ignacio as a leader who is worthy of this position. First, my brothers Hank and Larry spoke highly of Steve, his loyalty to his peers and subordinates, trustworthiness above reproach, and a cop's cop, so to speak, meaning he will have your back. He possesses great oral and written communication skills and a very good listener as he demonstrated with the multitude of reports and investigations while at CIS. I trust my brother's input, but in the military police corps, we have a saying, in God we trust, all others we investigate. As a citizen of this great island, I was saddened by the miscarriage of justice brought upon by the former chief who turned his back on his fellow police officers in the interest of politics and brought shame on this department through no fault of the officers involved. I spoke with Captain Ignacio at Government House after the governor's state of our island address. My takeaway after our conversation reassured my findings what other officers had shared with me about him. Captain Ignacio's character reminds me of the 1st Infantry Division's motto, no mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first. Captain Ignacio, should you be confirmed, all I ask, sir, is make it your duty first to serve and support the men and women of the Guam Police Department. This concludes my testimony. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Mayor. Buenas and half a day, honorable senators. My name is June Ublas, the mayor of the district of Barragada, and with me 
is our Vice Mayor, Jesse Bautista, and I do have some of our Municipal Planning Council members that are out, that are here. Honorable Jose Pedro Terlahi, yes, you're one of my favorite may senator. <laughs> Chairman, Committee and Public Safety, Border Safety, Military and Veterans Affair, Mayor's Council of Guam, Infrastructure and Public Transit, Imina 35 na Listraturan Guahan. Mr. Chairman and members of the Committee on Public Safety, Border Safety, Military, Veterans Affairs, Mayor's Council of Guam, Infrastructure and Public Transit, Buenas and Saludo para todos Hamzu, Vice Mayor Jesse Bautista and I, together with the members of the Barragada Municipal Planning Council, submit testimony in support of Stephen C. Ignacio to serve as Chief of Police. We know Stephen to be a humble man, firm, but fair, energetic and goal-oriented individual who is always focused on programs and projects that he undertakes. Furthermore, Stephen has established a network of resources and has developed an understanding the safety concerns and demands throughout the island. Steve is an active member of the Barragada Municipal Planning Council for seven years holding position as sergeant at arms. And he is also an active member of the Barragada Neighborhood Watch. With his leadership, we know that the Guam Police Department will continue to be Guam's finest line of defense, protecting the safety of our island and our people. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, we are proud to endorse Stephen C. Ignacio. He is he has the qualifications to lead and represent the men and women in blue and serve as the next chief of police. We look forward to your com to the committee's favorable report. Sidus Maasi, Saina Saramenti, Junior Blas, Vice Mayor Jesse Bautista, and the Barragana Municipal Planning Council. Thank you. Jesus Masi, Mayor of Barragada, you're my favorite. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Kim, Captain Kim. Hop it in. Good afternoon, Honorable Senators. I am Kim Santos, a police captain with the Guam Police Department. Um, I have personally known and worked with Stephen Ignacio throughout the last 30 plus years. We rose through the ranks simultaneously to the positions of police officer three, to sergeant one, on to lieutenant, and then to the rank of captain. The nature of police work is high risk and dynamic and requires strong leadership. I can, without question, attest to Stephen Ignacio's knowledge, skills, and abilities to lead successfully and to inspire all employees of the Guam Police Department to engage members of our community to solve problems. He has built a network of trust and accountability from the top down in his varying positions over his 31-year career. Well, I, I wanted to share that I actually had a three-page written testimony uh, to present here, but after I read the other uh, command staff's uh, three-page long testimonies, I opted to shorten my testimony to a half page because brevity is sexy. So we'll be brief here. But in a nutshell, I can tell you that Stephen Ignacio, and this is over from 30 years of working side by side with him, in a nutshell, Stephen Ignacio is fair, he is humble, he is considerate, he is competent, he is intelligent, he is wise, that is very important, we need a wise leader. Selfless, he is selfless and diplomatic, but most importantly, he genuinely cares about the Guam Police Department, our government and the community which he serves. Thank you kindly for affording me the opportunity to testify in support of the appointment of Stephen C. Ignacio to the position of Chief of Police. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain Kim. Hafidi, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, the Honorable Senators of the 35th Guam Legislature. My name is Paul Tapal. I hold the rank of a sergeant with the Guam Police Department. And I'm, I come before you in testimony in support of Captain Stephen Ignacio in the position of the Chief of Police. 
I had the privilege and honor in working under him. I started out first as a, in my infancy stage with the Guam Police Department when he was our criminal investigation instructor. There I saw a person in which I could turn to and I could find the leadership traits in which I used to develop who I am in my current position with the Guam Police Department. I've worked under Captain Steve for over 14 years assigned to the Highway Patrol Division and I've seen firsthand his managerial skills, his problem solving um, and the solution finding mechanism as a leader. With the current position of the public as the public information officer of the Guam Police Department, upon the appointment of the Honorable Lulian Guerrero, our Governor of Guam, the appointment of Captain Stephen Ignacio as the Acting Chief, we made, it a, we made a push to avail Captain Steve to the community. As we did many media campaigns with the community, opening up the transparency network within the community and the Guam Police Department. I can speak for the community itself because I also hold the role of um, community of, uh, in a position with the community affairs. And the overwhelming support from the community from the northern to the southern tip of the island, strongly endorses Captain Steve being endorsed as the Chief of Police. Not just with our fellow Gomanians or we call Chamorros, but our diverse cultures who call home. Captain Steve was a part of our fade away from violence and the partnership that we forged with the Micronesian Resource Center assured us that we have a good man in Captain Steve. You see, what makes a great leader is not someone who directs and gives instruction. A great leader is someone that makes the people around him better. He has that. He's the son of the South. He's rooted. He's humble. But more importantly, he's fair. He has an open heart and an open mind. And he listens. I thank you for the opportunity. And I continue to ask you guys to please, I'm sorry, I stand correct. I continue, I respectfully request the fine men and women of the 35th Guam Legislature to endorse Captain Stephen Ignacio as our next Chief of Police as we move forward with a new change and a new beginning. Thank you very much. And thank you. Jesus Masi, Sergeant Tapao. Go ahead, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Shane Dawson. Many of you might recall me from the bachelor or master's program at the University of Guam. Thank you for your support, but I'm here to ask for your support once again in regarding to the acting chief. Um, I have been in almost every specialized unit throughout our department at least once in my career. Uh, currently, I'm assigned to the Agate Precinct. I'm an acting supervisor and I understand the importance of removing acting from your title in order to effectively lead your troops. Um, the legislature has heard many testimony about what a great leader and everything that um, Captain Ignacio is. I would like to touch on two subjects that nobody's touched on so far. Um, for many years, I have seen chiefs come and go. The Guam Police Department seems to splinter and fragment more each time. My belief is the causation is due to many of the previous chiefs catering to certain cliques and factions within our department. I have known the acting chief my entire career. During my tenure, I have never witnessed him play into this pari pari atmosphere. He is human, so I'm sure he's closer to some officers, officers than he is, uh, or he's closer to some officers, but I've never seen this cloud as decision-making skills. Being able to separate friendship and the mission is a very desirable trait for someone in this leadership position. The next topic I'd like to discuss is racial discrimination. Many people try to avoid the entire conversation or ignore that it happens quite frequently in our department. Obviously, I'm Caucasian and I'm not related to anybody in this room. Throughout my career, I have been held to a very different standard and often treated like an outsider. During my tenure, I've had the pleasure of working with Chief Ignacio throughout my 26 years as a shift supervisor and as a precinct commander. Under his supervision, I've always felt valued and I felt treated equally. I believe this is an unnegotiable requirement for this position. 
I, I humbly ask for your support to confirm this man as the next chief of police. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Test. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Half a day. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. My fellow public servants, senators. My name is Lieutenant Stephen or Stephen A. Amagin. But before I start, I know I have five minutes, right? I feel safe today because uh, I have a lot of my brothers in blues behind me. Unlike the last time when I testified, I was quite lonely. Okay. Currently employed with the Guam, Guam Premier's uh, Law Enforcement Agency, the Guam Police Department, I'm here to support the nomination of our acting chief, Stephen. Okay, we have the same name. It's a history in the making. <laughs> See Ignacio for the Guam Police Department's Chief of Police. I am here today in support of the candidate selected by the transition team of our first ever elected woman governor, Magahaga Lourdes Afegui Leonguro and our Lieutenant Governor Joshua Franquez Tenorio. It is indeed the right decision, not the right direction, that they made to choose Captain C. Ignacio to be our next Chief of Police. Acting Chief Ignacio are just one of the few, it has been mentioned before, that he rose to the ranks from Police Officer 1 all the way to Captain. It's those rank structures enable him to gain the experience as a worker, supervisor, manager, and now acting chief of police. I was blessed to work with for then Captain Ignacio shortly after my transfer to Aganya Prison Command from the Drug Enforcement Administration as one of their task force officers in the early part of 2016. This is the first time I have worked with Captain Steven or Stephen C. Ignacio. During my tenure, as a patrol supervisor, I have witnessed and experienced his leadership style. One of his key leadership attributes is he cares for the personnel that he manages. Chief Ignacio always values family first, and I can attest to the fact that every time he sees my wife, he always tells my wife, thank you for your support, because without our family, our men and women in blues right now will not be able to function properly serving our community, because the bottom line is, my wife is my commander. <laughs> he believes in having strong home, as I mentioned. Front, home front will enable police officers to perform their job. I did mention that. I have a strong family support from my wife, too. He always tries his best to accommodate any requests from any of our police officers just to accommodate the need of their family because always family comes first with the Captain Steven C. Ignacio. He always makes sure our personnel be afforded to attend any trainings being offered by our department or other agencies in this island. I saw him as a person that cares about the welfare and safety of his personnel. Such traits reflected the high morale of the personnel under his command at the Ganya Prison Command and now the Guam Police Department. It was then in August 2017 when I was blessed to compete to be promoted to my current rank as a lieutenant, where he was given the opportunity to choose amongst 10 newly promoted lieutenants. <clears throat> and the six additional lieutenants were, were pretty much seasoned, and he chose me to be his deputy commander. As a matter of fact, when uh, he was appointed as the chief of police, he chose me to be his uh, staff assistant to, uh, to the chief of police. I'm, the, I'm his take up right now. It was during my tenure as his uh, deputy precinct commander that I was mentored by him in my newly acquired rank and be a deputy commander of Ganya Precinct Command with a total manpower of 32 police officers. The total number of that, that, that's not even enough to cover seven beat areas and 12 hour shifts. But when the shortages that our entire department has been going through he managed to make sure that our personnel are able to perform their jobs in a safe manner and allows them to go back home safely to their families. Again, family first. Our command was in use as political pawn. I had to bring back the past, okay? To strong arm this body to pass a bill 
by closing our Aganya Precinct Command, okay? transferring all of us to the Department of Corrections in a short notice. As a matter of fact, it was a Saturday after we were done with our with car wash, we were called to have a meeting. Okay? We were called to an emergency meeting. It was then that we were told that, in a short notice, that effective the next day, which is a Sunday, <clears throat> that we'll start working at the DOC, Department of Correction, to help them curtail their overtime and help them with the manpower shortage. I was appalled okay, with the decision and felt like we were thrown under the bus and run over three times, four times, five times. I don't know how I felt. Luckily, I'm taking high blood pressure pills now. It was Chief Ignacio that helped me keep my composure and remind me that, reminded me that things happen for a reason. And it kind of reminded me, I always believe in life that a lot of things happen for a reason. It's God's, it's God's way. So uh, that kept me from being voicing my opinion and kept me out of trouble. And I thank him for doing so. You know, God always provides you with someone that will keep you in track. And Captain Steven Nashi was there for me. During his, his, our historical journey at DOC, Chief Ignacio ensured that we were comfortable enough to be part of DOC working crew. He ensured that we have shelter in the form of canopy, and we have enough vehicles to prevent us from walking the perimeter, which has not been manned even with, before we got there. It's quite ironic, huh? He made, he made the time to visit our post, our post as mentioned by previous uh, speakers and ensure that we have all the necessities to help us endure our shifts. I know it's past five minutes. Let me, let me go through this faster. Our historical journey at DOC ended without any incidents. And yes, we established a great working relationship with DOC. We even have the opportunity to see people that we helped facilitate their stay at DOC probably for a lifetime. It was during this escapade that Acting Chief Ignacio has shown that he has that he could stand all the stress and still manage to perform his job as our precinct commander. Okay, he showed that strong, uh, strong leadership that enabled all of our police officers to endure all that duties that we have that we were not trained for at DOC. I am also a veteran of the United States military. I served four years in the United States Marine Corps from 1985 to 1989, two years in Army Reserves from 1989 to 1991, and served and finally retired while serving the Guam Air National Guard as a reserve component of the United States Air Force from 2000 to 2018. You may wonder what is the significance of this testimony has something to do with our chief. The total years I've served and have served in three branches of the military, I have not received any awards that recognizes my hard work without having to provide any accomplishment to my supervisor. I start, uh, a story that I shared with my fellow guards member during my so-called informal retirement ceremony. I was asked during my first, first of my two tours in Afghanistan by my supervisor if I could provide them bullets for my nomination for non-commissioned police officer of the month. To my surprise, I responded to the supervisor that I have 210 each 5.56 rounds and 90 each 9 millimeter rounds that I can provide. I told the supervisor that I appreciate the thought, but a supervisor, you should have known what job accomplishment as an electrician that was my job when I was in the Air Force. And if you don't know, if you know, you don't know it then, you don't really know you, the hard work that I do. The correlation to the previous story is when Chief Ignacio called me one night before Police Week nomination was due to check my email and just to provide the awards and decorations that I received while serving our military. As I checked my email, Acting Chief Ignacio has written a nomination for me to complete for the Manager of the Year for 2017. As I read my nomination, I was surprised that he kept tab of all my accomplishments as his Deputy Precinct Commander and the rest of my accomplishments in, in my life. Acting Chief Ignacio's nomination helped me win the manager of the year. He has one of the best quality of the leader, as a leader, that is knowing your personnel weaknesses and strength, which allows him to properly place his personnel to wherever they belong. 
ability to identify the weaknesses, weaknesses and help them improve on those weaknesses to be better officers. He also believes that if you take care of your personnel, that they will be able to perform better in their assigned tasks. Taking a personnel, family, family comes first, okay? I am respectfully asking for your support for acting Chief Ignacio as our Chief of Police. As our Chief of Police, we will be able to achieve my dream, our dream, same dream that I conveyed in 2015 when I testified for the, the previous chief to build our headquarters in accordance to Guam Code Undertaker Title 10, Chapter 77, okay, 77120 headquarters and police station. It states that with the approval of the governor, the Guam police may establish headquarters and police stations at such places as permitted by law and, and as may be advisable for the protection of the people. With the approval of the governor, the chief of police may use government lands, government lands, government lands, and buildings for the accommodation of police officers and their vehicles and equipment. As our, as our chief of police, our department, if you appoint him, if you confirm as our chief of police, our department will be able to abide, again, our department will be able to abide with our enabling act in accordance with the same title that I mentioned earlier, Title 10, Guam Code Annotated Chapter 77, to hire more police officers in accordance with the subsections. Chapter 77113.1, I want annual police cycle for fiscal years 2017 through 2021. That's 40 police officers per year, a total of 200 police officers until 2021. So we have a lot of catching up. And our chief of police right now is working hard with the help of the administration to come up with this mandate, unfunded mandate that was passed by this body. 77201, Guam Highway Patrol established. This requires 30 police officers in accordance with the law. Last one will be 77301, Division of Municipal Police. This is will be based on population base and this title states that we should or shall have a police station, a police covert in every villages in this island. This is a long odd process. This is a long hard work that we have to do and a lot of begging and begging to make sure the Guam Police Department actually be able to abide with this law because this law was passed with this, by this body. So when, when the, the actual uh, budgetary process, is, uh, the budget process comes along, this is something that uh, you, the, my, the, the senators, bear in mind that these are the mandates that the Guam Police Department have yet to abide with and accomplish. In my conclusion, I'm humbly asked again, okay, to give Stephen C. Ignacio, Captain Stephen C. Ignacio, our acting chief, chief of police, to be our next, uh, ne next chief of police for the Guam Police Department, because him being the chief, will be able to do better, and will be able to make Guam Police Department, Guam Police Department again. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Salamat. <laughs> Do we have any more uh, to testify? Once again, I want to ask that we cannot just cut down our testimony to five minutes because we still have one more group, I believe, and then we're going to have some uh, uh, questioning from the senators. And we also have another uh, confirmation hearing uh, right after this. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. Half a day. Mine's going to be very short. Sorry. But um, I'm here to testify on behalf of Steve. 
My name is Joey St. Augustine, or Josephine is my legal name, but most people know me by Joey. And I have known Steve and the Ignacio family for over 15 years. Our daughters are very close friends, and over the course of their friendship, our families have become friends. I have always no I've always known Steve to be a hardworking and family man. He possesses integrity, respect, strong leadership, which I feel that is beneficial to the Guam Police Department if made chief. His passion and desire to help our island and her people is why he became a police officer. But it is his hard work and perseverance that brought him here today. I feel that he can bring good to the change, good change to the department from the inside out and make our island safe for our children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead, ma'am. Hop it in. Good afternoon, honorable senators, extinguished guests, and acting chief of police, Stephen Ignacio, also known as my other dad. Before I begin, I'd like to start off by saying it is an honor to be here today to testify for acting chief, Stephen Ignacio. Captain Stephen Ignacio has been a mentor, instructor, and an inspiration to many who come across him. He is a motivational figure to look up to while working towards one's goals, despite how long or hard the path may be. I can personally attest to this because he was that motivation and inspiration. Although I am still at the beginning of my law enforcement career, Chief Ignacio has, been, has inspired me to be a public surfer, server and a team player. He has inspired me to be open-minded and to expand my knowledge during my trainings. He has motivated me to stay the course, to stray away from all things detrimental, and to continue pushing myself to the fullest potential. He is also a huge inspiration to his family, and it shows evident amongst his children. One question I keep hearing almost every day, whether it be on the news, social media, or amongst my peers, is why is, <clears throat> why is Chief Stephen Ignacio the best person for the job? I'd always respond with, why not? Chief Ignacio is the best person for this job because this job encompasses everything he is as a person on and off duty. The sacrifices he's made was not for himself, but for the people of Guam. It was for the homeless family across the street, it was for the victims of the crimes, and it was for all of us to feel safe in our villages and communities. He is not just a husband and a father. He is also a public server, a public guardian, a brother in arms, a leader, and one who will always have your six, which in law enforcement terms is your back. There is no other candidate that I trust to help our law enforcement officers and our agencies other than Acting Chief Stephen Ignacio. Thank you. Can you, can you say your name so we can have it on record? I'm sorry? Can you, your name? Mariana Camacho. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead, ma'am. Buenas and half a day, honorable senators. My name is Stephanie Lorenzo, and before I begin, I want to state for the record that the testimony I'm about to give today is not a reflection of the, of the office I work for or for my position in the Youth Congress, but just my own personal thoughts. There's not much that I can say about my dad's career that has not been spoken by the 18 panelists in front of me, but I can speak on my own experiences with him throughout my life and the influence he had on my siblings and I. Stefan C. Ignacio, my dad, is an example of hard work, perseverance, integrity, and passion. In his 31-year career, my dad realized how important it is to get a higher education and to develop oneself to better serve the office you hold. My dad is a proud product of the Doc Sanchez Scholarship from the University of Guam. There he obtained not only his bachelor's but his master's degree, all while being a full-time police officer, a full-time dad. In all those times, he never failed to miss a school function, nightly dinners, or help me with policy advice for Youth Congress. My dad gave me his love for public service, whether it was advocating for members in the community who may not have a voice, feeding the homeless once a month, or helping me write bills for Guam Youth Congress. My dad knows the importance of hearing someone and how important it is to be heard by someone. An example that comes to mind was this past holiday season. While my family and I were at a Ghana shopping center, there was this individual who was clearly drunk. His appearance was disheveled and he had a stagger in his step. When this individual walked into the store that we were at, the individual walked to the cashier and started showing her this foreign object. My dad stepped in and escorted the individual outside where the police officers from Agana Precinct were waiting. We later found out that the individual was drunk but didn't want to drive. He only had one quarter left 
and he was walking around to each and every store asking to borrow a phone so he could call someone to pick him up. We wouldn't have known that. We would have said he was drunk. We wouldn't have known that if someone didn't take the time to hear him. And that's the kind of person my dad is. He will listen to all sides in any situation, argument, whether it would be debate between my siblings and I, or situation at work. I ask that you put your, the same faith in him that his island, our Magahaga, and his family has put into him. Thank you for your time. Uh, Sister Smasi, ladies and gentlemen, uh, at this point in time, we're gonna uh, ask. I'm gonna ask the senators to uh, go ahead and do their uh, their questioning. But first off, I want to start with uh, Telu Senator Telu Tairagui because she she does have another uh, uh, prior commitment on uh, that she needs to go to. Thank you. Thank you, Sister um, Smasi, uh, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity and. Chief, I'd like to, um, I'm already calling you Chief right now. Thank you. First, uh, you had me at Southern Boy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm an Inrahan girl. My grandmother's from Arisu, so um, I know you're going to do very well. Thank yeah. you very much, Senator. <laughs> Chief, um, you mentioned, um, I'm, I, I just have a couple questions uh, for you. Yes, ma'am. Um, in your capacity right now, uh, you might be experiencing this or you might uh, experience this soon, very soon, and that is the deployment to those who are expected, uh, some of your officers who will be deployed. About how many are going to be deployed and how are you going to um, uh, address this issue? Uh, so, so currently, I have, um, I believe, two officers who are deployed with the, the THAT mission, which is up at Anderson. And then I'm expecting a loss of an additional five officers to the uh, upcoming deployment in May. In addition to that, we also have some uh, handful of officers who are in long-term long orders, either on or off island, uh, not related to uh, deployments. Okay. Um, the other one is, um, I know that you provided testimony on a bill, uh, Bill 20, that had to do with uh, providing the, the police department with $200,000 for uh, security cameras uh, to be used in uh, the different precincts and you did mention that Sinohanya is going to be opening up in May so this would be a, uh, one of the precincts that you wanted to, to put in there and um, this is you know can you uh, make any comments about this uh, that bill that's coming out uh, yes ma'am and I'd like to thank you for the introduction of that bill uh, I believe that the $200,000 although it's a small drop in the bucket uh, it, it'll go a long way in providing a uh, surveillance cameras that we were sorely needed at the new precinct, but also we can expand it to uh, areas outside of uh, the Tuman area where we have a robust uh, CCTV system. Uh, I know some of the things that we discussed were putting them down in the Agatni area where we have uh, also a big number of uh, visitors and uh, the, you know, the visitors are also susceptible uh, to crime. So uh, because of the loss of officers, uh, I, I think the, the CCTV system, the cameras, uh, help to provide uh, additional eyes and ears for the department uh, and help us to solve crimes. They've been very uh, uh, instrumental in helping us solve crimes down in the Tumon area. Very good. Thank you. And I do, um, you're very welcome. I mean, you can tell that this legislature it takes uh, public safety very, very seriously. As you can see how many people that were here today, you had a full panel for your confirmation. That's how important it is. Um, I do also know that uh, DOI has uh, Parks and Rec received some money for CTC cameras and they are planning on putting some of them. Um, that's also even less the amount that, uh, that GPD is going to receive on these cameras. But um, from what I gather, uh, this funding is going to help with some parks. However, um, they're going to have some issues with monitoring uh, those cameras and I know that the GPD does have the ability to monitor cameras so I hope you can work with Parks and Rec as well to um, assist them in monitoring these uh, if they do put the cameras in I don't know how long it's going to take but they're going to need some assistance and I know GPD is always you know willing to stand up and, and help. Yes ma'am so, absolutely we will work with them. Yeah. Thank we'll you so much that. and um, you, you definitely have my support. Uh, I've worked well with your office, and um, from the wealth of people here today, it's obvious that you're well-loved in the community as well. Thank you very much, and, Senator. And I loved your daughter's testimonies. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much, and thank yes, you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, Officer Sayama, go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Senator Talai. So I'd like to uh, thank all the panel uh, today, uh, Speaker Barnes and the uh, honorable members of the uh, 35th Guam Legislature. My name is Maurice Sayama. I'm retired from the Guam Police Department in November of 2015 as a police colonel. My purpose here today uh, will be to serve as an endorsement for the captain, uh, the good captain, Stephen C. Ignacio. I have known him since the fall of 1987 when we both joined the ranks as one of the recruits of the Guam Police Department's 28th Police Cycle. It was through the all-encompassing and arduous training that we endured where the true quality of his passion to serve permeated through his determined character. The Guam Police Department's quasi-military training regiment would seem at times to have been pulled out of a scene from the movie Heartbreak Ridge was a setting executed by the cadre of instructors who began molding the clay for the professional character Stephen Ignacio exhibits today. It was through our it was through the well-organized chaos that his ability to lead others became quite apparent. From that point and throughout his career, Stephen Ignacio has exhibited true professionalism and unrivaled dedicated service to the community of Guam. Captain St uh, Stephen Ignacio has my highest endorsement for confirmation to the position of Chief of Police for the Guam Police Department. With over three decades of service to the community, Stephen Ignacio rose through the ranks of the department and has exhibited traits backed by human compassion required of anyone who seeks to fill the position as Chief of Police for the Guam Police Department. His tenure alone is a testament to his vested interest in providing premier public safety and security service for our island. This, is, this endorsement is not given half-heartedly, but it's based on many years of working side by side with Stephen Ignacio as a peer and then has disappeared when I performed my duties as, a, as GPD's police commander. I can attest with great confidence that he's hardworking, professional, with a positive attitude and sincere heart focus at providing quality service to the people of Guam. He is an upstanding police officer, officer who is never, never satisfied by merely doing his job. He continually seeks ways for self-improvement and accepts greater responsibility with enthusiasm. He works well with the community and is only interested in bringing Guam, the Guam Police Department to the next level. As an example of this notable presence as a member of Barragada's Mayor's Council and the Neighborhood Watch program which directly affects the department's community policing efforts, he believes in promoting partnerships between police and community directed at efforts that reduce crime and improve public safety as a whole. His efforts are examples of how these partnerships provide police community supervision collaboration. Lastly, Stephen Ignacio's integrity exceeds the standard that, I, that should be expected from any ambitious individual seeking to fill this position. Thank you for your time, and I pray, for, pray that you confirm Captain Stephen Ignacio as Guam's next police chief. Thank you, Maurice. Maybe we can start from the left, Senator Mars. Maybe we'll start from you and then work our way down here and then we'll go to the other side and work to my left. Thank you. Buenas and half a day, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so my sister-in-law is an avid watcher of the legislature channel and when she knew that um, Mr. Stephen Ignacio, the chief, was going up for the confirmation 
uh, hearing today, she made sure to send me a message on WhatsApp. <laughs> and so I want to read it on um, her behalf. My former brother-in-law and her husband was the late retired police commander, Kim Regis. And so she wanted to make sure to be able to share that Kin always had great ad admiration for Steve Ignacio. He considered him a good man and a good police officer. And if Kin was here, oops, I hit something. If Kin was here, he would be testifying in favor of his appointment. And so uh, she just wanted to make sure to share that on behalf of Kin. So uh, I know we have a lot of us here. I'll end with that. Thank you very much, Senator. And I send my best to uh, uh, your, your sister, Ms. Linda. Senator Barry, go ahead. Uh, this is Masi, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, half a day, Mr. Ignacio. Um, I just want to thank you, thank you for your continued service and dedication uh, to pro providing safety for our community. Uh, and the care that you've given. It is, clear, it is clear to me from the many testimonies that have been given here today that you're a man of honor and that has garnered the respect of your peers in our community. Um, I look forward to the improvements that you've already initiated in the department and um, I, you have my, you have my uh, support. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Paris. Senator Joseph Alstein, put the vote. Can Th see? Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Steve. Sir. 28th cycle. I'm yes, from the 19th cycle. Blues have blues. blues There's have no blues, doubt. Sir. Yeah, I got your back, sir. Thank you, sir. I will say yes to your confirmation. Thank you. I've, I've watched your career. I know the family that has come to testify. And I, Steve, may God bless you. And we, as the appropriation committee chair, reach out to me and let's sit down and talk about all the mandates that Lieutenant Steve kept talking about. Reality is, there's only so much money, Steve, and you know we're going to work and figure out how we can take care of the police department because the police department has always been underfunded. I know that when I got in in 77 and when I got out in 84, and it's still underfunded. Yes. But we, I know we can work something and we can figure out what we need to do. And as Senator Tello brought up about the park and the cameras, I think we'll talk about that offline yes, sir. because there's things you need. It's not just all in cameras. You need more people. Maybe you need cameras, but more people is better than just cameras. All right? Yes, Thank yes, you, sir. Chief. We will see you as Chief, hopefully, by the end of this month. Yes, sir. Thank you, Senator, for your support. She just wants to see Senator St. Augustine. Um, Senator Regine Lee, please. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you very much, Chief, for accepting the governor's nomination. I also want to take the time to thank all of you for participating in the process, and I want to welcome you to your Guam Congress building. Um, thank you so much for the testimony that you've provided on this young man's behalf and for giving us a better understanding of exactly who he is, where he comes from, and where we believe he will take us and he will take the Guam Police Department. Um, Captain Ignacio, I also want to thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me in my office and answer a number of the questions. So I just have one question for you today. Yes, um, I also did my due diligence and I spoke with many police officers that I know and trust. And I will say that the two things that came out more and more every time I asked about you was that they felt that you were a man of integrity and that you were fair. And so those are certainly characteristics that I hope that you bring with you um, into this new role should you be confirmed. So we spoke a little bit about civilian volunteer police reserves, and so you already know um, I will be following up with you on that. Yes, ma'am. Um, also, you had mentioned in your testimony about technology and how you were looking forward to rolling out tough books and rolling out um, docking stations in the police vehicles, so we're looking forward to following up with you on that. Yes, ma'am. But I wanted to give you an opportunity just briefly um, to touch a little bit on domestic violence and sexual assault in our community and what GPD, what we can expect from GPD going forward, um, what has been done. And I know you talked a little bit about the annual refresher course that's already in statute, but could you give the members of this committee and the public that's watching um, a little sense of what you plan on doing in this respect um, for, for your vision for the department? Yes, ma'am. So uh, the Guam Police Department, 
Uh, we have annual refresher training on domestic violence and uh, sexual assault issues. And uh, we, we have partnerships with uh, the Attorney General's Office, Prosecution Division, and also with our detectives from uh, the domestic assault response team. And so we, we go out and we provide fresher, refresher training to the officers and the officers themselves from the detectives, uh, the DART unit, they also receive uh, annual training uh, through, funded through the Stop Violence Against Women grant and also with partnerships with the GOM Coalition Against Sexual Assault and Family Violence. So, so there's always a, an opportunity every year to make sure that the officers uh, have the newest uh, and, and, and latest uh, techniques in investigating domestic violence and addressing issues of domestic violence in our community. Thank you very much, Chief Sidhu Smasi. Sidhu Smasi, uh, Senator, Senator Mary Torres, you are recognized. Thank you. I'm not so interested in asking you questions. I was here mostly to listen to the audience, and I appreciate all the testimony. So I just want to say thank you for being here, and I'm really here to just listen to you. Sidhu Smasi. Thank you, Senator. Senator Clint Rigel. Rigel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, congratulations, of course, on your nomination and for accepting and your willingness to serve. Um, just one question real quick. Um, I know the community-oriented policing strategy is something that was sort of initiated by your predecessor. Yes, sir. I was just wondering if that's something you're looking at continuing, especially in light of, um, you know, officer shortages. I know there are plans to hire more officers, which is great, but one way perhaps to maximize shortages of officers is to focus on a community-based approach, um, wherein the community becomes partners with uh, the police force. And, you know, when you have the community as partners, uh, I believe they help out uh, with the police force's job. You get people from the community who will help you solve crimes, uh, help uh, yeah, help with investigations, solve crimes, you know. When you really get the community involved, they say like, oh yeah, I know who did it, it's that guy down the street, or it's this guy over here, or I saw this car. So I'm just curious if that's something you're looking at continuing and improving upon. Yes, sir, and thank you for that question, Senator. So, so we do uh, continue to support uh, the various initiatives that, that have uh, started or have been started. Uh, we have uh, neighborhood watch programs in a majority of the villages, and we continue to grow that initiative as well. Uh, we also have uh, many different programs aimed at our youth. And uh, just last week, we completed a Fade Away From Violence uh, volleyball uh, tournament, or kind of like a, a gathering for, for middle school students. Uh, the, these are the, the tier three students, and we brought them together. Uh, you know, we brought out mentors from the community, from the Guam national basketball team, uh, to, to, to be that positive role model. And we taught these children, you know, uh, better life uh, skills and better critical thinking skills so that they become um, better citizens of our community. So we continue to grow that with our, our youth and our, our neighbor watch programs so that we get out in our community and, and the community becomes a part of the police department in helping us in addressing issues that, that they face because the community knows uh, what, what the needs are within their respective areas. So we need to respect that. Thank you, Captain Ignacio. Uh, no you, further Senator. questions, thank you. Sizo Smati, uh, Masi, uh, Senator uh, Clint. Uh, Senator Therese Chulai, you're recognized. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, to everyone who came to testify, thank you for your testimony. It's very helpful to hear from all sectors of the community, and it's very exciting that that's what we have here today. All sectors of the community, um, leaders, past leaders, and uh, but what really impressed me is uh, the testimony from the uh, officers yes. and that you seem to have gained their trust and their um, their belief that you are going to be fair that you have been fair and that it's it I guess they they believe that you've proven it through your career and that you will continue to do that as a chief to be fair and um, you know not not give preference to certain classes of people or your friends and that you're able to distinguish that so so that's I, I thought that was very impressive, and your skills, and that your skills as a problem solver, I think we're all looking forward to that, and, and we can all use, you know, f fresh ideas in this regard, and, or that your experience is going to, you know, finally come in with, uh, with leading the way, right? So, but there were just a couple of things, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask that, I asked you in my office when you came to, to talk to me prior to this confirmation hearing, 
There's one thing that um, you know, I was very bothered by in the last term, and that was when they closed the precinct. So I was glad to hear that one of your officers also asked you the same question. You know, are, is that going to happen during your watch? And you assured him that was not going to happen. You assured me that politics was not going to cloud your vision as to what's right or wrong for our community or what's safe for our community. So I'm, I guess I'm, if you don't mind, I'm just going to ask you one more time for the record because I think the public would love to hear this from you. How are you going to ensure that politics does not help, you know, make the decision for you as to whether to close a uh, precinct, you know, and what is safe for our community? Uh, Senator, under my watch, there will never be a precinct that will be closed. Uh, that's, that's an injustice to the community. It should have never happened, and it won't happen under my watch. And that the governor and lieutenant governor have also stated that it will not happen during their administration. So I stand by that. Thank you very much. And, um, and then could you just briefly describe, so one of the other officers testified that you had done a little bit of restructuring already. And, or, well, he said that you had moved uh, one of the investors, or I don't know how many investigators out of the investigation department. And we also spoke about this, the investigations. So we want people in our communities, police officers, and we want investigations to be solved. So I was very glad for all the consistent testimony about you being the problem solver. But how do you uh, expect to restructure? I guess, are you intending to downsize the investigation division or how is it going to be structured? No, absolutely not. Uh, so the, what, what we do in the department is what we call a one-for-one a -one SWAT. So if I take an officer out of investigations uh, to put him out in patrol, then that usually means that I'm going to bring another officer from patrol to, to groom him and, and make sure he learns a different set of skills. Uh, there, there may be times. Uh, I know I'm, I'm coming up with the deployments. So we need to make sure that, you know, the priority is the neighborhood patrol division because they're the people that respond when you call 911, they're the people that you call when you need to file a complaint. They're the people that, that need to be there when a police officer needs to be there. So we need to make sure that the, the neighborhood patrol is, is properly staffed and is well staffed at, at all times. So if, if I do pull officers out, maybe on a temporary basis, and, and they'll return back. And I look forward to getting the additional officers so that we can also uh, beef up you know, and, and bring the numbers of personnel at Investigations Bureau up. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chief. We, yeah, we are uh, very anxious. We want this drug crisis on Guam to, to be solved, right? Yes, to, we have to all work together. We realize that, but we, we need good leaders and we need, we need all of the police department to work together on this. That's, I think, really key that they all are together on that because uh, we have one of them mentioned some divisions over the years, and I think uh, the community can see that. Yes, sir. So, but I want to I want to thank everyone. I think it's uh, I'm very proud that you're from the south, that yes, you are going to be put into this position, that you have the trust of of your officers, that you have integrity that's been testified to, and that all all of the um, your family that you have been able to balance. That's very difficult even yes. even in the two years i've been just a senator it's it's a challenge so i i i give you kudos and to your family for the, all of their support for you over the years and to all the support that all the families have given all these officers but to do chief thank you senator to do uh senator therese um chief for stepping up to the plate ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here to the men and women in blue, Undunkla Nasidzus Masi, for finding it in your hearts to take the time to be here for your chief. I am deeply honored and humbled at the fact that you truly uh, have come here to support his efforts. Um, before I, I say my comments, I'd like to just recognize that the uh, some members of the Youth Congress are here. I saw the speaker, Christian, here earlier, and of course, uh, some other members of the Youth Congress wanting to acknowledge them because they're a part of the stepping stone into the policy-making body. To the Director of Rev and Tax, I also know from the South, uh, Mrs. Daphne Shimizu, thank you for being here. I think you're here to support both candidates. Uh, to the Director and Deputy Director of DOC, I see you here since the beginning, uh, Mrs. Bre Brennan Mano and 
Mr. Joey Terlahi and Dunklin Asitos Masi. Uh, I see that the collaboration and, and the work that you've done with the chief already brings to uh, mind a lot of cooperation that it's needed to have our um, community successful with everything that happens. Um, chief, uh, I will disclose for the record um, and to the August body and to those that are listening uh, for transparency, uh, my son, uh, Jacob Munya Barnes, who's deployed uh, uh, right now and won't be home to July, is married to your daughter. And uh, I want to welcome her. I've always welcomed her. I love her. I see my grandson. I see Matt up there and, and also your daughters who uh, presented such wonderful testimonies. I want to also note for the record, ladies and gentlemen, that his uh, youngest daughter, Stephanie, uh, who's the legislative secretary uh, to the Youth Congress, uh, going on her second or third term, has been working very closely with our office, uh, working with good policy for the Youth Congress. I'm very impressed at the values of respect that you've taught to the family. And just for disclosure's sake, I have to tell the public that that is where our relationship lies. And, and we have known each other, I think, for almost two decades uh, uh, as my um, son and my daughter-in-law have been married for many years if not almost been together over a decade. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we had a lot of folks speak about the chief. And I want to say that um, when we asked him right after inauguration, if he can set a team, bring a team of the men and women in blue to work closely with the Department of Education, talk about the issues of concern, talk about what we can do to collaborate and what GPD was doing already and working closely with that interagency approach, uh, you stepped up to the plate and you said, Speaker, we're gonna let it happen. And then you also did two or three follow-ups. You had a in informational hearing with the Vice Speaker, who was the Oversight Chair on Education. And then you networked with all the other uh, senators that you needed to bring the information up to the forefront. Um, in the past, I know, uh, based on all the struggles, it wasn't always easy to bring the teams together. And I think after hearing the folks speak about the interactions and that giving them the respect and the leadership for them to do their jobs, I think that brings an A-plus for me uh, to support your um, uh, uh, nomination for chief. Uh, and I say that with all my heart because I, I'm going to ask the August body based on the transparency to see if I can support you. And if uh, given that opportunity, I will uh, uh, give you my 100% support. I also want to note that um, when we take somebody who set the hum humble beginnings, working your way up to, through the ranks, working with your peers, working with your family, but also still honoring your Sina. I wanna say um, there's still a lot of respect. Respeto para todo. And uh, you have those traits in you. And um, I always say behind every great man, there is a wonderful, great wife. And I see uh, my consagra Betty sitting there and I just want to thank you and your family for all of you for being here uh, to, to support our nominee from the South. And I want to say it is with much respect and with much humility that, we, um, that I will ask my colleagues to please support you as our chief of police for our island of Guam. So uh, thank you for stepping up to the plate. Thank you to the governor and lieutenant governor for truly realizing and finding the leadership from among the ranks of blue for the men and women that you support and for the community that you will continue to protect. Thank you for that blessing that you give to our people. Sainamasi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, Chief, when we first uh, met and uh, we talked about you know, being nominated to be the, the chief of police, uh, not was I only happy, 
and I'm more more than happy now because with those uh, stages on you, you look uh, you look more handsome. <laughs> anyway, we talk about the the seriousness of the problem in the Guam Police Department regarding. Uh, I told you that, and you know that. Uh, the biggest problem that we face in the Guam Police Department is the retention. And of course, we, and my son is here right now, along with the mayor of, uh, the mayor of Jonia. And uh, the thing is, we, we talk about uh, the, the, uh, the numbers of people that we need to, re to, to, uh, be, uh, to be recruited, to, to be police officers because there's there's something there's an obstacle there that is kind of restricting us we're restricting you to really hire a police officer in the easy way possible and we know for a fact that en 100 is the stumbling uh, block on that one and congratulations because uh i think the new chair for the uh, post the the police officer standard training uh, under the Police Officer Standard Training Act, uh, we did away with the EN 100, as I recall, with the last meeting that we had. And now we can move forward because, you know, we, if we continue having the Department of Administration have that in their prerequisite, their requirement, we're never going to attain, attain, uh, attain the 100 police officers that the governor and the lieutenant governor and myself has... Uh, as talked about during our campaign. And now with that gone, you know, uh, my plan is, and we talk about this, that, you know, uh, we need to uh, get the Belaya with the initial, the, the police recruitment uh, training together and expand that training so that it'd be easier if they graduate from Belaya and the police, initial police training, they can get that five points. And I'm working on that because, uh, you know, you know, not all of us, and I think that EN 100, as they say, you know, even a master's degree flung those tests. So there's something wrong with that. So we're, we are on our way to make sure that we have the numbers of, of police officers that, that, you know, we need to put out there. Uh, and I know that's your priority. And I know that the police department uh, is facing challenges. But the thing is, with us working together, uh, with GC, uh, GCC and uh, other uh, law enforcement agency, we can we can just really uh, you know uh, really move forward because the thing that we face right now is the importation of illicit drugs. And you know during my term being a senator, I I try to because I was a narcotic officer for the longest time. And at that time, the consuming of drugs coming in is very easy to detect. And now there's different, different uh, techniques that, you know, they, input, uh, they, they take in drugs. So I know we will be working with the, with the director of custom and yourself uh, regarding these new techniques and how we can really reinforce uh, and, and, and invigorate the, uh, the, the things that we need to do to really cut the drugs away from, from our island. So once again, uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for showing up. You know, it was, this was uh, quite a crowd, man. You know, Stephen, you're going to, I'm telling you, you're going to be confirmed because Senator Nelson was here and he asked for 15 votes. And I, I'll tell you, you know, uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, I'm not going to ask them, I'm going to tell them <laughs> to vote for you. Thank you, Senator. Anyway, it, it's a it's it's a routine things that it's a routine thing for us, Senator. That before we close, we have to thank. First off, uh, I want to thank all my colleagues for for joining me in this confirmation. I also like to thank all of those who testified on your behalf, uh, and I call you uh, Chief Ignacio, uh, uh, Chief of Police. I'm sure that Steve will do a good job. Uh, as a police chief and that he brings with him many years of dedicated service in the force. It gives me confidence that he will do a good job in his leadership position. The Committee on Public Safety, Board of Safety, Military and Veterans Affairs, Mayor's Council of Guam Infrastructure, Public Transit has duly heard the executive appointment of Steve Inacio to serve as the chief of police. And 
written testimony may be uh, submitted uh, to my email at senatorpito at senatorjpterlai.com. Uh, you know, a lot of people, when I said this, uh, uh, the email, you know, sometimes it confuses because there's two senators at that line. <laughs> or maybe uh, hand delivered it to my office at Bridge Point Building Suite 202 140 Aspinall Avenue, Haganda. Then again, if I give you my address, you will know where this is at. But coming from the police station in Haganda, you pass the, what do you call that? The, the post office is the yellow building on the, on the right. Uh, I'm on top of the second floor. So thank you. Um, you need to submit your, your written testimony uh, on or before uh, April 29. Uh, and this confirmation is uh, adjourned, and the time now is, what's the time? Because I can't see that. 5.45? Huh? 5.45? Yes, but we're still going to hear uh, Colonel Agigi. You know, Steve, Lana was supposed to end this like uh, two hours ago, you know? That's why I'm sometimes confused with that watch and my watch, because I said my watch to be right on time. Anyway, that's only a joke. I just want to keep the adrenaline up. <laughs> you know, that's how I am. And my wife always tell me, Pedro, stop making people laughing when you're doing that, because that's a formal thing. I said, hey, you know, that's, that's the way I am. So congratulations. I wanted to congratulate you, like Steve, because you are going to be confirmed. I'm telling you. Go on, and I'm going to tell this you guys. This is Washington Center. Okay, we're going to take at least one, two minutes uh, to reset up everything again because, you know, we were supposed to be having another confirmation hearing, but we have to change again. Sijus Masyun Dangkulu Tau Tau Southern Malaysia Ugaiza Hamzu.